a couple of years ago, I did a how-to video on how you can set up SSO for your website for free using a service called Let's Encrypt. Well, there's more talk than ever right now on the internet about SSL and Let's Encrypt and some of the potential shortcomings. So I thought now is a great time to show you how it's gotten easier than ever to automate not only generating the certificate, but automate the renewal process. <laughs> Let's take just a couple of minutes to briefly go over what SSL is. SSL is an encryption technique that is designed to protect traffic as it travels from one computer to the other. Some people equate it to a tunnel existing between one computer and the other that you can send packets through. I like to think of it more like jackets, protective jackets that you put over each one of your packets. So those packets travel along the same routed paths that ordinary packets travel, but they have this protective jacket over them so that you can't see what's inside of them. By far the simplest way to implement implement SSL is using a self-signed certificate. A self-signed certificate is basically what it sounds like. It's a certificate that you generate on your computer and you sign yourself. When we talk about signing a certificate, we're talking about a cryptographical signature that allows us to prove that the certificate that is used the first time is the same certificate that has been used subsequent times. The purpose behind that is basically so that we can verify we're connecting to the same server. Well, as you might imagine, with a self-signed certificate, because there's nothing tracking these certificates, there's really no way to prove that subsequent visits to a website are in fact connecting to the same server as they were the first time. That's where the idea of a certificate authority comes in. A certificate authority is a central place that issues certificates and all major web browsers trust that certificate authority. When a user uses a major web browser that is visiting a site with a CA generated certificate, the user receives a little green padlock indicating to the user that the connection is not only a secure tunnel, but the CA has verified that that's the same website and same certificate that has been known in the past. If a user visits a website that is using a self-signed certificate, they receive a pretty scary message that says the site may not be secure. And most users are gonna click off the site simply out of rational self-interest. Now, the downsides to using a certificate authority are simply really cost. Traditionally, it's been a couple hundred dollars to purchase a certificate that's registered with a certificate authority. And so a lot of less important sites, sites that aren't using payments and, and uh, don't need to send and receive secure uh, communication, have opted not to use SSL. But that has all changed thanks to a movement called Let's Encrypt. Let's Encrypt is a certificate authority that allows you to generate an SSL certificate for free. That SSL certificate is registered to the certificate authority Let's Encrypt and thus is trusted by all major web browsers. Now, as indicated earlier in this video, we've done a how-to before, but it's gotten even easier. And some of the so-called problems with SSL uh, revolved around the ability to automatically renew the certificate. And we have a process to show you how to automate that. So you'll never have to worry about automating your certificate. It will simply happen automatically. But before we continue, I want to address some confusion that I've seen come up on the internet over and over again over the past couple of days. And that is the question of authenticity. The question of authenticity is, can a certificate authority prove to a user that the company a website claims to represent is in fact associated with that company? And the question, and the answer to that question is both yes and no. SSL in and of itself simply creates a secure communication tunnel from the visitor to the web server. It does nothing more. Certain certificate authorities do do an additional level of verification known as organizational verification. And that does prove that a website is in fact associated with a given company. Of course, the obvious problem here is that most users don't bother to look at which certificate authority they're using. So something like Let's Encrypt, for example, does not do organizational verification. It simply verifies that the owner of the SSL certificate owns the domain. And I'm going to prove this to you because I purchased Dell.Casa. Now, I don't have any official affiliation with Dell. In fact, as far as I know, they don't even know that this video is being made. And yet we are going to create a site that looks much like Dell's, except with some interesting twists. We're going to register a valid SSL certificate through Let's Encrypt that's going to show the little green padlock on the top of the browser. And the only thing that's really going to be different is we're going to change some of the content within the site. Now, that's to exemplify that a malicious person might present a site as in fact being associated with Dell and that SSL does nothing to mitigate that. The only way to do that would be to go to a 
certificate authority that does do organizational verification. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we set this up. Okay, so here we are at our demo machine, and uh, we're going to be using CentOS 7 as our server to show you how to set up a free SSL certificate. So let's go ahead and get SSH'd into our CentOS 7 server. We're also going to be using the YubiKey to provide key-based authentication. So we're going to see our pin here. And the first thing we're going to do is enable the EPEL release to get the software that we need. So we'll install that. And then uh, let's go ahead and install the requisite software. So we're going to install a web server. We'll install our cert bot, which will be used to generate the key or the certificate, and we'll install wget. Okay, and we'll go into our web directory. And let's go ahead and enable our web server. And let's go ahead and start our web server. Okay, now we have a server with a web server. So let's go ahead and get some test content, our fake Dell website. And let's extract that into our web directory. And now let's go ahead and set up an SSL cert. So we're going to do that with the cert bot command. And this is the software that is going to generate the SSL certificate. And uh, we're going to specify that it's an Apache installation. We're going to specify the root directory of our web server. And we're going to specify the domain that we want to generate the certificate for. So it's going to ask us for our email. And we'll agree to the terms. And yes, we're willing to share our email address. And we are not going to be using a virtual server. And yes, we will redirect standard traffic to our SSL. Okay, and that's it. Now we have an SSL certificate. So let's go ahead and open up a web browser. And we will, in fact, go to the website dell.casa. And you'll notice it. we get the green padlock. We have an SSL certificate. As far as the user is concerned, we are on a Dell website. But if you notice at the top, it says Dell hates Windows. And we've made some interesting changes to their product lineup, uh, offering 1604 and Neon and uh, some commentary about Windows. Now let's look at what it takes to automatically renew the certificate. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to create a cron job, and this cron job is going to run at noon and midnight every day and check to see if our certificate needs to be renewed. Now, if the certificate doesn't need to be renewed, nothing's going to happen. But if our certificate is expiring, then our cron job will automatically use the cert bot to process a renewal. So that's a look at how you can set up SSL on your server. Hopefully you found this information useful. If you did, like and subscribe below. For more information, check out the Ask Noah Show. That's my weekly talk radio show where I answer your tech questions live on the air. You can catch that show live Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Central at asknoahshow.com.